Somewhere in this picture, there's a group of feral animals. Having trouble seeing them? Here's the same image taken with a thermal sensor. And there they are, as plain as day. With the advancements in the technology, we've been able to use thermal imagery and stuff to be able to uh, search uh, countryside for feral animals uh, during the day and during the night. Welcome to the brave new world of aerial surveillance. Farmers are dealing with wild dogs, deer, pigs, goats. We have the ability to be able to find them, population density data, and then they know the size of the problem. Once you have that, you can then move forward to actually allocate funds and, and, and assets to solve that problem. And that's what has brought these men to Victoria's high country. So specifically here, they've got a wild dog problem. It's been growing for many years, and just recently there's been quite a lot of attacks, and they're about to start lambing. So the team sets up in daylight and waits for darkness to descend. When it comes to feral animal control, really it's the animals that hold nearly all of the cards. They're normally shy and elusive, fast, nocturnal, and they have plenty of places to hide. In fact, till now, we've only had a really vague idea of what's out there and in what numbers. A lot of people think that oh, these drones won't see through thick cover, and as you can see, it does. And the great thing is that it's not a helicopter spooking the animals, that this drone will sit there and hover, and you can see that the animals will hang around. So it gives us enough time to plot where they are, what their habits are. Uh, it, it really gives us a lot of information that we haven't got before. Here's a case in point. The team knows this dense bush harbours fallow and samba deer, as well as wild pigs. Sure enough, high on the ridge top, they spot several fallow deer. There they are. Uh, we've got two fallow deer by the look of it. Run through the scrub. Go get the gun. Go. Is that how far are we talking? Uh, about 600 metres in. Yeah, right, okay. How many? To the uh, northwest. There's a two stag of them. in there as well. Two of them in there, mate. No worries. Okay, I'll head off. I've got the radio. Just guide me on. The drone operator can see both the hunter and the target and can direct Michael via radio to where he might get a clean shot. Mate, there's company in the uh, buffoon, approximately 200 metres straight ahead of us. But not this time. Deer are notoriously elusive and they flee to safety. The men around this drone also had a near miss. Yep, he's just uh, scanning now. They were in the aviation industry. When the global pandemic hit, it came crashing back to earth. It just took us by surprise, having that rug pulled out from under you, that it just crippled the aviation industry. Michael Durand and John Davison were pilots, flying 737s around the world. Along with aircraft engineer Dave Storen, they were keen hunters. Several years ago, while using drones in the outback, they saw the possibilities of business. COVID-19's sudden arrival gave them little choice. Well, we decided to reinvent ourselves to, to protect ourselves from not being in a position where you, you can't put food on the table. And the dynamics that they have, you know, to, to draw on their experience, their knowledge and their passion, then Fieldmaster Systems was born. After three decades in an industry utterly changed by the pandemic, Dave Soren has just taken a redundancy to go full time. When COVID struck, John Davison and his family were stuck in the USA. It was definitely frightening what we were e exposed to. And then, uh, but what, what made it better was that we did have mates. We were all in the same boat. After release from hotel quarantine in April 2020, John resorted to a skill he'd learnt over the years, farm fencing. I had a tractor and a post ram and I was, looked at my family and I thought, well, I've got to keep working. I can't just sit here and be emotional about what's happening at the moment. 
At one stage, we had four pilots all fencing together um, to, just to put food on the table. On a fencing job, John met Alan Finlay, a former agribusiness executive. After three decades in food processing and manufacturing, Alan was looking for a new challenge. We sort of complement each other. We've got an aircraft engineer, pilots, and then we've also got Alan, who's uh, part of the corporate world. And that's really what we were lacking as well, was starting up a business. Being hunters and using drones also opened their eyes to the extent of Australia's feral animal problem. In short, it's massive and growing. We're one of those countries that has so many introduced species that the native flora and fauna won't exist in the capacity that, that we see now. Feral pigs, estimated to annually cost millions in livestock losses and ecological damage, continue to infest new areas. You wouldn't have heard of too many pigs in around central Victoria, but now it's, it's just common sight. You know, Wangaratta, Benalla, there's pigs everywhere. Wombat State Forest, there's pigs. So it's, it's coming down and it's going to get worse. They don't stop. They're just going to keep coming down closer to Melbourne. These feral pigs in southern New South Wales, caught gorging on sheep fodder, were able to be humanely dispatched by shooting. Feral deer are expanding their range at an even faster rate than pigs. Feral deer can be difficult to control. They're fairly elusive, they're generally active at night time and they readily cross property boundaries. They impact agriculture, the environment and our road safety. They also pose a biosecurity risk for livestock because they can transmit diseases. So technologies that can allow us to identify where they are will be really helpful in the future. This is extraordinarily revealing. The game trails, oh, they, they stand out like, predominantly from the air. You can see where, the, where they're going in and out. We can also detect them a lot easier over a, a vaster area to hone in on actually where they are. It gives you a good idea at night time, especially because of the, the, the thermal imagery. You can actually see the density of them, how many there are out there, as opposed to having people walking in on foot just with night vision. It gives you a complete overview. Here in Victoria's high country, the drone operators are targeting wild dogs. It's lambing season when sheep and their newborns are most vulnerable to attack. The district has been plagued by wild dog attacks and the losses are mounting. Word soon spreads via the Bush Telegraph that the drone team is visiting. He started killing little ones and then they got more and more and then he started killing big ones and biting a hole in the side of them. And just going for liver and kidneys, I couldn't believe he was they, doing that. He must have got a taste for it. Yeah. We know that our capabilities with the drones and our hunting experience is an asset. It's about also educating the farmers or government agencies just how good the capabilities are now. The team heads to sheep country, bordered by forest. It's steep with plenty of cover. A wild dog can travel quickly over an immense distance. Notoriously cunning, they can tear a sheep flock to pieces. So Peter, tell us what's happened to this the sheep. Uh, it's, been, it's been grabbed by the throat and pulled down, yeah. So a wild dog a few weeks ago has yep. got this? Yeah, yeah. And it, how many have you lost this season? About 20, yeah, yeah. Pretty traumatic. To... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of dead animals, but this is, this is, this is as bad as it gets, yeah. And um, we've seen that drone technology. It's, uh, what do you make of it? It's pretty uh, enlightening, isn't it, what, what, you, what it reveals? It's, it's a new thing, isn't it? You know, like, it's, it's, a, it's a game changer, isn't it? Yeah. This is new to me, and I've looked at everything. Anything and everything. I've had a lot of trouble with wild dogs. Yeah, and, uh, and this is very target-specific. So that's where they're being attacked, isn't it, between the block yep. and, and the road? Yeah, well, that's yeah. the bush there. It's very, very hard to catch dogs in open paddocks. You catch the sheep, your cattle spring them every day, wombats spring them every day. There he goes. 
The drone reveals kangaroos, wombats and a fox, but no wild dogs. The drizzling rain gets heavier, too wet for the drone, and by eight the team pulls out. But the locals, now aware of its capabilities, are highly impressed. Anything at all to pinpoint where they are, that's big help. And that's what this is about? Yeah. yeah. Frustratingly, the team missed its target by a whisker. Soon after, in the early hours, a wild dog attacked, maimed and killed more than 20 sheep in this very paddock. This technology has immense benefits for conservation as well. There's also the native flora and fauna that are being marauded effectively and their environment's being destroyed. So it's not just about taking out the ferals from the environment, but it's also trying to provide uh, a, a protection blanket effectively. The pilots have gained a raft of further qualifications and licenses to operate this technology. The company has already won contracts with government agencies, such as national parks. It's also done agricultural work and aims to do more with this drone. They can carry uh, insecticides, they can carry uh, fertiliser, um, and it gives us the abilities to access the areas that you wouldn't otherwise be able to access with, say, quad bikes, uh, or where helicopters can't get into, sides of, sides of hills around um, waterways. Weed will be one of the obvious uses. So you think blackberries in, you know, hard to reach ravines. So if you're, if you're a local council or a farmer trying to manage your land, uh, particularly when you're around sensitive waterways and things like that, so you, you can really be targeted without doing that uh, high overspraying or, you know, where you can't get your, 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 your vehicles in or your ATVs. The men believe contractors using drones will soon be commonplace such as using them to count buds to calculate fruit yield or to assess yields in crops before harvest. It's a big, big advantage in agriculture, whether it be for spraying, whether it be for um, crop inspections or whether it be for uh, feral animal locations and eradication. I think drones are definitely going to play a big part. The technology's here now. It's in within that cost base where people can afford to do it and I think it's now time we take that on and give it a go. Come out the other side and, and you look the kids in the eyes and, and they, you know, can at least say, well, well, what did Dad do when we were locked down? Well, Dad and our family's all stuck together and we've come to a, a new place that's, that's going to be successful and, and I can't think of a better way to do it than with, you know, a bunch of, of families that are all on the same page, but good, decent people. I'm just really proud of him. I'm proud of all of them for doing it, for not sitting on their hands and just for changing their future, our future. <laughs>